All right, let's check out your chapter three homework. So on the first one, they want you to make an estimate. So they give you that uh, the air conditioning completed 30 jobs, had an average revenue of 5430, and they want to know the total revenue for the month. Well, based on this information, the only way you can calculate that is just by multiplying. So you take 30, multiply that by the average revenue per job, would give you the estimate for your total revenue about 162.9. That's an easy one. All right, that's the first one. Let's check out the second one. On this one, they want you to calculate uh, the mean, median, and the mode. So the mean's pretty simple. You've got seven observations here. So what you simply do is you uh, add up all these numbers, all the observations. That's going to give you uh, 228. You divide that by seven, and that's going to give you an average. They want you to take it out to two decimals, about 32.57. The median, typically, you have to range from small to low. I'm sorry, uh, low to high. Take your smallest number, put it on the bottom, and arrange it in, in sequential format. So notice they just take all these numbers here. You got the lowest are 15, 15, 31, 33, 39, 41, then 54. So they rearranged them from low to high. And because this one is an odd number, you just take the most middle. So in this case, it's going to be 33. Your mode is the most occurring. In this case, it looks like it's going to be 15. All right, that's number two. Let's check out number three. And of course, on number three, again, I'm just getting right to the data. Uh, they want, again, you to calculate the mean and the median. It's 10 applicants. So again, for the mean, you have to add all these up and divide by 10. And on this one, because it's an even number on the median, what you got to do, let me show you this down here. You, again, you go low to high. Uh, it's the difference between the two most middle. So you go one, two, three, four. So five and six are your two most middle. You average 99 plus 100. That's going to give you the 99. Let me clear that. That's going to give you the 99.5. So in this case, because it's an even number, you take the two most middle and divide by two, you get 99.5. And I think you can answer the last one when you report to the president. Applicants are not better than regular people. All right, so that's number three. Let's check out number four. On this one, they want a weighted mean. This is where you got to divide by the weights. So they give you, uh, they purchase 300 shares of this stock at 53 bucks per share. So 300 is a weight. And then they purchase 400 shares at a, at a different cost. So that 400 is another weight and then another 445. So to get an, a weighted mean, the weights go in the denominator. So 300 plus 400 plus 400. And then of course you got to multiply 300 times the stock price. And that's what you put in the, two, in the numerators. You have to add those up. You get a total um, of 50,700 divided by the weights. Gives you a weighted mean of about 46.09. All right, that's number four. Let's check out number five. They want you to calculate the range. That's just the difference between the high and the low. So again, let me page down so you can see that. So the calculation's right there. The high was 52, the low was 28. The difference is 24. The error rating mean, you just divide by the total observation. So you have to add them all up. You should get 304 divided by eight, which is about 38. Now on the variance, what you have to do is you have to take each of these numbers, the 34, the 46, and so forth, and you've got to compare it to that mean, and then you're going to square those. And then once you've squared them, you have to add up those squared differences, and that's going to be called your variance. And so usually what I would do in, on the next couple problems, uh, and of course down here they're showing you that eventually, uh, you know, the variance is going to be, and once you get that variance, you divide by seven, because I believe there are Again, seven observations, one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, on this one, oh, I guess there's, that's right, there's seven. Um, you typically, in this case, because it's a sample, they wanted to take it, uh, divide by uh, seven, I'm sorry, divide by eight. And so, but generally what I do is, uh, let me draw something up. I usually put these in a vertical alignment. So like, I would have like, I would list these like 34, 46, 52, and so forth. And then I would set up a column where I do the differences. So if the mean is 38, I would do, for example, 34 
minus 38, and of course that's a negative four, and I would list those so forth. And then of course, then you would square it. So then of course, negative four squared would get you to 16. And you do that, you set up these columns, and eventually what they're doing is, is you would add up all of your squared data. And so down below, I'm just kind of trying to give you a visual where it says, I'm just gonna point it right here, it says, uh, their squares are 16, and then of course that's where I got the 16. You do that for each of these, and then you have to add them all up. In this case, you get 470, and then you divide by eight. That's how they get that variance. So that's gonna be 58.75. All right, so that is number five. Let's check out number six, more of the same. And on this one, we have five different samples. So down below, let me just jump to the number. You can do the math later, but you should get about uh, 2.77 as your average. If you add up all these uh, earnings per share and divide by five, you get about 2.77. And then here they're showing you, they're kind of taking the differences squared. Notice 2.68 minus that mean. Every one of these, you're subtracting out the mean. You square them, divide by five. And in this case, you'll get 1.26 as your variance. Now they haven't asked you for the standard deviation yet. Eventually when we get to the standard deviation, you'll take the square root of that variance to get the standard deviation. All righty, that is number six. Let's check out number seven, more practice of the same. Of course, you got the range. Remember the range is simply uh, the high low. The range in this case is gonna be 11.6 minus 4.3. So you get 7.3. And then of course the mean, you just add up your numbers and you divide by five, your mean is gonna be 34. Uh, Point, I'm sorry, it's gonna be 6.94. This is your calculation on how to get the mean. So 6.94 is your mean. Go back up, so you plug that in for your mean. And then of course on this one, they do want you to do your standard deviation. So you'll notice they show you that calculation right here. Notice the mean is what they're subtracting from every time. They're squaring it. You add, add them all up, that's the square differences. You're adding them up, divide by five. And of course that would give you your variance. In this case, they took this one out. Usually I take mine out about two decimals. They took this one out three, so 6.594. And then you take the square root of that would give you about 2.568. That's called your standard deviation. Of course, I'm just gonna show you this. The official explanation is basically your square root of your variance, all righty? And then of course, you have a couple questions to answer. I'm um, usually anybody, if you have a higher variation, in this case, it was plywood and the one that had the higher returns was Dennis. All righty, so this is number seven. All right, now, on this one, uh, on the previous problems, they didn't specify, but those were what they call population variances and population standard deviation. On the sample variance, if they specify a sample variance, the only difference is that you're gonna, in your denominator, you're going to divide by N minus one. N is called your sample size minus one. So in this one, when they say calculate sample variance, of course, you've got to get the mean. If you add all these up, you get eight. And then of course, you have to square them, take the differences and square them. That's going to be your numerator. And then divide that by N minus one. So five minus one, which is four, you're going to get a, a sample standard, or sam sample variance of 5.5. And then of course, you just take the square root of that uh, to get about 2.345 as your sample standard deviation. But once again, what I find if you're kind of writing these out manually, what are maybe you're typing it into an Excel. Um, if you just want to see it visually is I would write these vertically. So 11, six, 10, six, seven. And then of course, X bar later on, you'll learn X bar is your mean. If our mean is eight. So if you take X minus X bar, I'm going to call out this column. So 11 minus eight, of course, would be three. Six minus eight would be negative two. 10 minus eight is a positive two six minus eight is a negative two, and then seven minus eight is negative one. And then I would set up a column called x minus x bar squared, where you're squaring all these. So you'd have what, nine, four, 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 and one. And then of course you would add those up. And again, I'm just showing you this as a visual because that's essentially what they're describing right here in this numerator. You add all those up and then you divide by n minus one because there's one, two, three, four, five minus one, and then you get 5.5. So again, distinguishing between sample variance and population variance, sample, the denominator, you do n minus one, 
with the population, you, do, you just divide by n, which is your sample size. All right, that was eight. This one's a little bit longer. We're doing the same thing um, against this one's sample variance. So just like I showed you before in the previous one, I'll jump right down to the bottom. You can see in the numerator, it uh, looks like the mean was 104.1, but notice they're taking those differences squared, adding them up. And because there's 10 observations, 10 minus one is your denominator. You get a sample variance of about 120.77. You then take the square root of that, you're gonna get about 10.99. All right, so this is a good practice one. Take some time, study this one. We'll be doing sample variances and sample standard deviations for a lot of the chapters in this, in this class. All right, that's nine. And then the last one, they get into something, we'll get into this later on when we get into the empirical world with continuous probabilities. And these are all defined, but let me just give you a visual on, on what they mean by these. So um, I like to, Think of the empirical rule as I'm gonna draw the curve, the bell-shaped curve. And so for example, on this first one, when they're saying between, if we say zeros in the middle and negative two's there and a positive two standard deviations is there, it's defined that that middle area is already defined for you at 95%. So you can just plug that one in right there. On this one, they're, wanting, they're asking you, on part B, I'll draw the same curve. It's essentially the same thing, but they want you to split the thing in half. Sorry about my writing here, my stylus is a little weird today. So negative two and a positive two. So half of 95 would give you 47.5 on each half. And so from essentially zero up to two, you're gonna say is that half. And then the last piece of the puzzle is they're wanting you to find out this little area above two. Well, of course, it has to make up 50%, so that's the other 2.5%. So you just plug that 2.5% right there. Again, we're gonna be studying this uh, in more depth when we get into, I believe it's chapter seven. All right, guys, I believe that is it on my comments for the chapter three homework.